I think we're going to go ahead and get started. Can you all hear me okay? Yes. yes. Excellent. I'm Toddie Steelman. I'm the Dean of the Nicholas School. I had a chance to meet some of you while you're here for Visiting Students Weekend. Um, and how many first year students do we have here? How many second year students? Do we have any second year students here? Okay, excellent. Thank you guys. So uh, I've had a chance to meet you guys over this last year. So uh, welcome, welcome everybody. Very, very excited to have you all here today. It sounds like there is some great energy out there in this auditorium today. So 27 years ago, I was sitting exactly where you were sitting. I was a student here and I started 27 years ago, so it's sort of hard for me to imagine that that was almost 30 years ago. And at that, uh, at that time, I had no idea where my academic journey was going to take me. And look where it leaded, right back here, which is really exciting for me. I'm just uh, starting my second year here as dean, and I've had a great first year, and I'm so excited that you guys are joining us um, as we take this journey together. Um, at the time when I was sitting out there exactly where you are sitting today, I remember thinking, oh my goodness, look at all these unbelievably accomplished professional people sitting around me. How on earth did I make it among this group of people? Why, why am I here? Do I actually belong? And the answer then, as it is today, is yes, of course you belong, of course I belonged, um, but sometimes it's a little intimidating sitting out there and you, once you start learning what all of your amazing classmates are doing. Um, and so welcome, we're excited to have you here, and we are excited to get on with this orientation journey that we are all going to do, that we are all going to do together. You are here for a reason, and the reason that you were led to the Nicholas School is because you have a vision, you have a purpose. And in the Nicholas School, we pride ourselves on our ability to follow our professional passions. And we get to do that together. The Nicholas School prides itself on its ability to do this and do it well because we are the school of the environment. Um, we know better today than we have in the past that humans and corporations have profound impacts on our planet and all the other living beings on this planet. And we know that we need to understand biophysical science in order to tackle these incredible challenges that we face. But we also know that we need to understand human behavior if we are going to effectively tackle these challenges. And so why biophysical science and the social sciences are incredibly important for us to bring together, we also know that we absolutely have to put that knowledge into practice in the real world. And that's why you all are here. And nobody does this better than we do at the Nicholas School, and we really pride ourselves on that. Um, it is the hallmark of what we do. You may or may not know that we have two other degree programs in the Nicholas School. Of course, you all are here as part of our professional degree program in uh, Masters of Environmental Management and in our Master of Forestry. But we also have an undergraduate degree program where we have three areas of concentration where we hope to cultivate the next generation of undergraduates and put them out in the world. We also have a doctoral program with several concentration areas. That's our next generation of researchers and scholars who go out to train the next generation um, of environmental students, as well as to do research uh, in, in the world, um, advancing sort of how we begin to understand our big challenges, whether it's the crisis in our oceans, whether it's climate change, whether it's the, the decline in biodiversity that we're facing globally, or many of the other big issue areas that we are now addressing. So those are, it's important that you understand that you are but one of uh, a group of people that study with us here in the Nicholas School. It's always exciting for me to understand who is out there in our audience and who our students are. You are now part of one of the largest forces in the United States and perhaps internationally that aims to tackle environmental challenges. So in the Nicholas School, we have a theory of change and our theory of change has two big prongs. One is research and one is education. On the research side, our faculty pursue a research agenda 
both individually and collectively that aims to shape the knowledge that will change our world in terms of environmental and sustainability challenges. On the educational side, you are part of this cohort that will be put out into the world. We put out a group of, of graduates every year out in the world to effect change on these values about which we care so very deeply. And what's exciting to think about is the magnifying effect that we have collectively. You know, I think sometimes it's easy to get frustrated, perhaps, when you think about how can I have an impact as an individual, right? But what you do individually is incredibly important. And if we think about what we are doing collectively as part of the Nicholas School, the magnifying effect that we can have, we have over 7,000 graduates out there today who have graduated from this school doing this kind of work. That's our undergraduate, master, and doctoral students. Over 400 of those are international students, and our international students are a growing portion of who we are putting out in the world. And I think that's very powerful. I think it's very exciting to think about how we are all part of that legacy. And you will become part of that legacy as you journey through these next couple of years with us. And so this is just an opportunity to sort of look that we have a total of 300, almost 350 professional students in the program with us this year between first and second and, and dual degree students, representing a whole variety of different countries and different states. So lots of, lots of exciting perspectives that come together in this program in many different ways. While you are here, I urge you to take some time to get to know people outside of your area of concentration. There's a natural, uh, affinity to sort of group with the people that you're studying with, but you have a chance to get to know many other people um, who are studying things different from what you are studying, and I urge you to cross those boundaries and get to know others while you are here. You will make friendships in this program that will last a lifetime, and I think that's incredibly exciting to think about how you can make those friendships. In fact, not this last weekend, but last weekend, I was down in South Carolina with a group of 10 graduates from this program. Um, where we have gotten together over the last 25 years, you know, continuously just, just meeting with each other because of the friendships that we made. Among that group of people, Leah Carr, who works for the Global Environmental Fund as part of the World Bank. Rebecca Beavers, who is the coastal geologist for the National Park Service. Jeff Anderson, who just stepped down as CEO as uh, Sustainable America. Sarah Laskin, who is the Vice President of Advocacy for the National Wildlife Federation. And I could go on just in terms of who all is in that group. But we've grown up together after finishing the program and continue to hang out together. And we are now part of that cohort that's in sort of advanced career stage, poised to shape the direction of the environmental movement as it continues to grow and develop. Public, private, nonprofit sector, we're all doing different things. And so take time, establish these friendships while you are here. They will last you a lifetime. And I think that's really exciting. This first year cohort that are out there are, we have 155 students and we are so excited to have you here. It's always a really exciting part of the year is when we get our new group of students in and we get to start this journey again. 68% uh, female, 25% international, 10% minority, and 100% Nicholas School. <laughs> um, when I go through and I read the biographies, I always get really excited to see who is out there in the audience. And you may have had some time already to get to know some of your classmates or not, but I really urge you to lean in and ask people what brought them here, what are you doing, and share your stories as well. I just want to share a few of those right now. Somebody out there was an aquatic research intern for the Walt Disney Company. Someone hosted a late night talk show on national TV in Malaysia when they were 18. I have an avid birder who has 278 species on their life list already. Imagine how many more <laughs> will come when you're, uh, you know, in the next decades. Uh, a division one track and field athlete. A founder and CEO of an environmental friendly company in India. Someone who has worked for more than six years as a volunteer firefighter and an EMT. Thank you for your service. Someone who has sailed on an America's Cup sailboat under the Golden Gate Bridge. Someone here has prayed with the Dalai Lama. Someone was on The Late Show with Stephen Colbert in 2016 and did a live promposal to their surprise best friend. I urge you to check out the YouTube video. <laughs> it's great. <laughs> Someone visited six continents and 33 countries. 
Someone, and this is, I think, really remarkable, someone is a vegetarian who drank goat's blood with the Maasai in Tanzania. Now that's commitment. Um, each of you has an amazing and interesting story that led you here. So like I said, don't be afraid to share those stories with other people and ask people about their story. When we connect in that way, we are stronger together as a community. And we have some unbelievable second year students who, have, who are coming back from their summer experiences, whether they were doing internships or whether they were doing work on their MPs. And I just want to tell you a little bit about the second year students. Don't be afraid also to ask your second year students for advice. They have been, they've already traveled in your shoes for a year and they have probably some really great advice to share with you if you're willing to ask them and lean on them. So Roseanne Lamb um, is one of our second year students. Um, she interned this summer in the Netherlands and in Switzerland with the Sanford School. So the Sanford School is our policy school um, of uh, the Global Policy Program and worked on international energy and environmental policy with international governmental organizations, non-governmental non organizations, um, the private sector and government professionals in Geneva over the summer. Karen Wu spent her summer with the Environmental Defense Fund in their Climate Corps as a fellow, exploring um, with Sustainable New Jersey, and she was exploring how to do better energy incentives for the New Jersey Clean Energy Program. Courtney and Allison were part of a hyena um, distribution mapping program over the summer as part of their assistant ships in this past year and Courtney was actually in Africa hanging out with a whole bunch of different critters uh, that you probably would not see in North America I'm quite confident. Kimberly and Virginia spent uh, some time in Oaxaca working with seven different indigenous groups as part of a project that they're working on um, looking at wildlife conservation there in Mexico. So there's just a couple of stories about what some of our second year students have done. And, and like I said, they all have really interesting uh, tales to tell as well. So ask them about them. I want to tell you a little bit about the history of the school, because I think it's helpful to know about the history of our school. We were formed in 1991, so we're over 25 years old. But we were formed out of three different units, academic units, here at Duke University. First, the Department of Ge Geology, which was formed in 1936. Uh, back in the days when one could smoke in buildings. <laughs> uh, the Marine Lab, which was formed in 1938 down at the coast in Beaufort. And then finally, the School of Forestry, which was also formed in 1938. So we've got all three units that came together in 1991 under the School of the Environment. So we have a very storied history as part of this school. And I urge you, if you don't know much about the forest or if you haven't, if you don't know much about the Marine Lab, the forest and the Marine Lab make us incredibly unique as a school of the environment. No other school has a forest and a Marine Lab. I encourage you to get out to the forest. Is anybody gonna be able to get out to the forest as part of the orientation? Some more work we're gonna do? Good, good. And if you get a chance to get down at the Marine Lab, I think that's great. When I was a doctoral student, I spent my last two years living in the middle of Duke Forest while I was writing my dissertation. Uh, my dog Kobe and I would go for a walk out there every day. It's a wonderful place, it's very close to us. If you like to get out in the forest, it's easy to go for a hike out there, I urge you to do so. And then when I was a student, I would take the odd weekend and go down to the Mar Marine Lab. Who here is in the Coastal Environmental Management Program? Program. Okay, get to know those people, okay? Because they're gonna be down at the Marine Lab. <laughs> and that'll be your excuse to go down to the Marine Lab and meet people down there. Because the Marine Lab is great. The vibe down there is very different than here up on the Durham, Durham campus. Um, they have boats, there's rum, there's the beach. Uh, there's all sorts of good stuff happening down there. Um, and also, uh, this year, either at the end of this calendar year or the very beginning of next calendar year, we have a brand new research vessel that is arriving down there for all sorts of great stuff. The RV Shearwater is our newest addition to the Marine Lab down there, and we're really super excited about the addition of that. So lots of great stuff to do um, down at the Marine Lab and out in the forest, and I encourage you to do that. So um, 19 of our second year students will be down at the Marine Lab, and it looked to me about 20 or so of you will be down at the Marine Lab in, in your second years, and I think that's really exciting. Um, we have 21 different buildings down there. Uh, Hurricane Florence hit us last year. We have recovered stronger, better than ever, and if you get down there and chance to see all the renovation that's taken place, it's certainly worth your while.
I hope you also have some time to take advantage of everything that North Carolina has to offer. I know several of you are from North Carolina, but most of you are not from North Carolina. We have the mountains out west. We have the Piedmont. That's the area where we are in right now. And then we have the coast. So we offer a little bit of everything, and there are great things to do in all three of these geographic areas. So I encourage you to get out and take advantage of that. As you may know, we all get a little bit crazy around here, especially in March. I am a huge basketball fan and follow um, both the men's and women's basketball teams. Um, if basketball isn't your thing, uh, men's and women's soccer is also really big. I'm a big women's soccer fan. Went to the World Cup in France this summer uh, to see that and uh, really like to follow the team here. So there's lots of great stuff to do all over campus. And if sports aren't your thing, that's great. One of the things you might want to do is that we have a um, service learning opportunity this week during orientation. If you haven't learned about it yet, you will very soon. So we have two options for you basic basically. Um, we have service learning projects on campus and off campus. For our off campus experience this year, so on Wednesday you'll have a chance to go out and do that if that's something you want to do. Um, the Goodwill Community Foundation has a center where students can come and do a variety of things and you can choose from three primary service areas, jewelry processing, electronic recycling, or farm services. So if that's something you would like to do and get off campus and get involved in the community where you're going to live and work for the next two to three years, there's a great opportunity. If you'd like to stay on campus, we also have an opportunity for you. Um, we'd like a small group of students to help us develop a lesson plan for our pathways and pipeline STEM, STEM programs for our K through five students that we work with. Um, so if you're interested in that, that service project will take place here on campus. We have an embarrassment of riches that happens across the university. So those are just things that are happening in the Nicholas School. You also have the entirety of the Duke campus to explore and investigate. And if the only thing you do is take your classes while you are here, you have missed out on some incredible opportunities that happen outside of the Nicholas School. So I encourage you to look, choose strategically, and get involved in a variety of things that can happen um, across campus. So if you want to engage or exercise a leadership opportunity, we have many, many student groups within the school, and you can learn about those as well as professional, professional groups or other social groups or other Duke University-wide social groups this Friday um, at the Duke Environment Fair. So we will have on the second floor over in Granger Hall all sorts of tables and desks with people who will come and tell you about all sorts of exciting opportunities. So just try to get out and take advantage of some of those things. Your health and well-being are incredibly important to us, and I want you to know that we have mental health resources available to you. So mental health and well-being have become much more important to all of us in higher education over the last many years. And so on campus, we have something called CAPS, which is the Community uh, the Counseling and Psychological Services. So over at the Wellness Center, so in the picture right there, that's the Wellness Center that's located right behind the Bryant Building and across the school from the Sanford uh, Policy, Sanford School for Policy. Um, there is a beautiful building over there that has a variety of services available to you. Uh, CAPS is located on the third floor, so if you feel like you are in need of counseling or psychological services, they have walk-in appointments Monday through Friday from 10 to 4, and you can avail yourselves of that for screening and consultation. Um, Duke Reach is another service that if you feel like you are in crisis, or if you feel like you know somebody who is in crisis, you can use Duke Reach, it is anonymous, to make sure that someone gets the help that they need when they need it. So a couple different opportunities there for you in case you need those services. Harassment is also something that we take very, very seriously within the Nicholas School and at the university. And we also have a variety of folks who are here to help you if you feel like you are being harassed. Harassment, unwelcome conduct that is serious enough to significantly interfere with your work, education, or living conditions. So if something like that is happening to you, you have folks here. Cindy, where are you? There's Cindy, where's Sherry? Sherry is right there. Nancy, are you here? 
you guys are going to get to know Nancy in like 12 different ways. So you will find Nancy for sure. Um, and then we have a whole variety of HPAs, about 16 different HPAs throughout the school who are available to you. So there should be somebody out there that you feel comfortable going to if something is happening and you don't know what to do about it. So we want to make sure that you know you have those resources available to you as well. And I'm kind of winding down now, but I want to really talk, I want to end up by talking about diversity and inclusion. Our goal within the Nicholas School is to create a diverse and inclusive environment for everybody. And it's important that you know we don't want to be equitable and diverse and inclusive as an end into itself. It is important for us to have these values because ultimately being more diverse, being more equitable, and being more inclusive makes us better scientists. It makes us better managers. It makes us, it makes us better foresters. It makes us better practitioners. Because when we know the diversity of perspectives and people and ideas out there, we are better overall in how we serve this diverse society in which we live. And that's what we aspire to. Um, we underwent a strategic planning process three years ago, and we have been implementing that in the last three successive years to address diversity and inclusion issues within the school, and that includes a variety of activities from recruitment to student support, retention, outreach, pipeline programs, faculty equity, curriculum planning, and staff equity and diversity. So it's very far reaching in terms of how we are thinking about diversity and inclusivity and equity across the school. Um, to address these issues, we formed a new group three years ago called the Actionators. The idea here was is to have a group of individuals thinking about diversity, inclusivity, and equity issues across the school instead of a single point person, a single individual to tackle that. And I am very, very proud to say that last year the Actionators um, won Duke University's Eddie Award, that's the uh, Equity, Diversity, and Inclusivity Award on campus. It's the highest award that Duke gives for those values on this campus. Um, it recognizes individuals and groups for exceptional leadership in this area. And I think we're very proud to be the recipients of that. This committee engages and supports a variety of activities throughout the school over the year, and we invite you to get involved. One of the things that we heard from students last year is that DICE, which is the student group that works on diversity, inclusivity, community for um, the environment, uh, wasn't working closely enough with the actionators. So that's one of the things we really strive to do this year is to get much more involved with the actionators and DICE working together. So we have faculty, staff, and students working more closely aligned uh, to work on these values throughout the school. And this is just a cautionary note, because while we aim for a diverse and inclusive environment, we know that at some point during this school year, we are going to have something happen that's going to challenge us, whether it happens within the school, whether it happens across campus, whether it happens somewhere in the United States or out in the world, something is going to happen that challenges us. And we need to affirm our values as this community when those things happen about what we stand for. Because that's the way we strengthen our community. We could control what happens within these walls, within this school, and it's important that we stand tall for those values. While we can't control what happens outside these walls, we do not have to be part of that process. And affirming our values is part of that process itself. Our founders professed many years ago that we want to strive for a more perfect union. And that goal was aspirational and it continues to be aspirational, I think intentionally so. Because we have a legacy of slavery, we are a nation of immigrants, and we have a variety of challenges that will continue to uh, be something that we struggle with forever. But when they do, when those issues do come home to roost, I think we want to be able to stand tall about what we believe in and why we believe in those things. And I think that's what a good, strong community ultimately does. So it's just something to remind us about why we are here and what we stand for. In conclusion, I want you to know that we are very excited to have you all here. And I have established a series of lunches with the Dean so if there are issues out there that concern you, um, I want to hear from you about them. 
Um, Sandy, my assistant, will be sending out an invitation to come and have lunch with me probably about every other week or so. And that's an opportunity for you all and for undergraduates and doctoral students to kind of have, I figure if I serve you food, you might come. Uh, if, that's, if that's a good bet, then <laughs> I urge you to sign up um, for those lunches so you can come and share with me what your thoughts are. What's going well, what's not going so well, what we can be doing better as a community. Importantly, you know, you have rights. As a student here, you also have responsibilities. As I've just said, we want to create an inclusive environment within the school. And we know that we have a lot of uncivil behavior in the world today, and we don't have to be part of that. It doesn't mean that we need to tiptoe around each other. We should be able to disagree with each other. We should be able to engage in spirited debates with each other. And we should be able to have these conversations and not be too afraid of that, but we can do it in respectful ways with each other. And that's part of what we lack in our, in our world today, is how to actually engage in those kinds of meaningful but respectful conversations. And I think those are things that we can all work on and do better. So at the end of the day, I think we're all here because we believe in what we can do as part of this school. And I am excited to have you here, and I look forward to hearing from all of you. And thank you, and let's get on with orientation. We have a lot of work to do.